Hi everyone, Paolo here. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since my last video. I've been busy with my Salesforce consulting work. In this video, we're going to learn how to get started using the Salesforce DX MCP server. Let's jump straight into it. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that agentic tools are on the rise. Vibe coding with Copilot, Claude, Cursor, or even Agent Force for developers are among the array of available AI agents out there. One thing these AI agents are lacking is having context and awareness of your project. Here is where MCP comes in the picture. It solves that problem. So what is MCP? MCP is Model Context Protocol. It's an open source project run by Anthropic that standardizes how applications provide context to LLMs. Basically, it provides a set of tools for an AI agent to use. There are a bunch of MCP servers available now that you could try and play around with or you could even build your own. With Visual Studio Code, there are two ways you could install and run MCP servers. You could visit this website and check out all the available MCP servers there, or you could install using the editor, which I'll show you in a bit. This MCP servers can run locally or be hosted remotely. For the basics, we will only be running them locally, and I'll only be covering the Salesforce DX MCP server which is now available in beta. The Salesforce DX MCP server is a specialized modelized context protocol implementation designed to facilitate seamless interaction between LLMs and the Salesforce org securely. It uses the same OAuth as the Salesforce CLI. This makes it seamless to use. The current tools and available this time of video are the following and are promised more are coming in the future. There's the core, the orgs, the data, the users, the metadata, and the testing, and a few more others, which I'll show you. Enough talking, let's get on and do some setup. So let's open up Visual Studio Code, and let's create a project. So Command-Shift-P to open up the prompt, and select SFDX Create Project, select Standard, um, Agent Force MCP, and I'm just going to save this in my development directory. Cool. Now I have a blank project um, and I have the GitHub Copilot here. So I'm going to close this first. So first you want to do here is authenticate yourself to your org. So I already have myself authenticated. So I'm just going to select the org that I want to use for this demo. And that's the first thing I'm authenticated. So if I open up GitHub Copilot now, and let's ask it using natural language, how many admins are in the org? It wouldn't have any context about it. It doesn't know the org that we have. So let's try to enable or add an MCP server to understand that. So you could hit Command Shift P again and select list server. As you would see here, there's no running server. So I could click on add here and I have the option to add a standard IO, HTTP via NPM, PIP or Docker image. Or I could click on the browse server here and I click on this and it would open up the same thing for selecting an MCP server from Microsoft. So let's not do that. The easiest way is to go to your project here, open up VS Code, Right click, create a new file, and type in MCP JSON. And if I jump back to GitHub, I simply need to copy this code and paste it here and save. Once I save, you would notice I have this option to start, and I could click on start, and now I have this option. So you would see it says 10 tools running. If I go to GitHub Copilot here, I have this wrench icon here. If I click on that, at the bottom it would see MCP Server and Salesforce DX. And under that is the bunch of tools that we could use that it has awareness to. So these are the tools that the MCP Server from Salesforce has been developing and more to come in the future. Oh, I forgot to mention what these commands are here. So this is the type. It's the standard I.O. The command it's going to execute is npx, which would run 
this command, this MCP server locally, and then the org that I target, you could specify different orgs here. I'm only targeting the default org, so it only has awareness to the default org. And the tool set, I'm saying all. So that is the same as selecting all of this, or you could have it configured saying you don't want it to have access to the assigned permission. And hit OK. It doesn't update here, but the GitHub Copilot doesn't understand the instruction for assigning permission because you have it disabled. So you could pick and pick which context the MCP server is aware of. So let me enable that for now. And now if I go back to the prompt here, how many admins are in the org? If I click that and send it now, it's gonna run that get username using the MCP server. And it reported that there is one admin, system admin in the org, which is me. If you need details on the other profiles or want to check for more details, let me know. So now the LLM, the agent, knows information about the org. So another thing I could do is um, I could say how many accounts are in the org. So this time, if I expand this, it's actually going to tell me what it's doing. It's doing SQL. There are 19 records in the account. So if we also jump into that org, which I have open here, And go under accounts here, all accounts. You'd see there's 19 accounts on this org. So it, it knows what to do. Um, another cool thing here, which we'll also try to figure out why it doesn't do what is expected is I'm gonna say, retrieve all Apex classes from this org. It's going to give this prompt um, a warning that MCP servers or malicious conver uh, conversation content may attempt to misuse code through tools. So if you understand this, you say um, continue, allow in this session, allow in, the work, uh, in this workspace, or always allow. So I'm going to say always allow because I know this. It's saying there are no new updated classes in the org to retrieve, but there are classes in the org to retrieve. So if I expand this one and this one, there's no classes retrieved. That's because there's no package XML here. So what I'm gonna say is, what are the custom Apex classes on the org? This won't try to retrieve it. It's just gonna run a query. And it's gonna report there's 56 custom classes in the org. So I'm going to say create a package XML for this classes and retrieve them. So you can see it created the package XML with all those data points. And now it's able to retrieve those metadata. If I look here, you can see that all those classes has been retrieved. So you could immediately see without me doing any particular coding, just prompting the AI, it has awareness of what's happening with my org. And um, let's see, if I open one of this class, this customer service class, and it's inside that context, I could tell the LLM say run this unit test. And I'm gonna say continue. And it's gonna run that unit test. So this is just a simple demo of the power of Salesforce DX MCP server. As you can see, the unit test has run successfully. The method can fetch, which is this method has passed and there were no failures or error. All right, that's it for this video. A simple tutorial for the Salesforce DX MCP server. If you have some questions or things that you want me to try with this uh, MCP server, let me know in the comments down below. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.